hey, if you're seeing this, that means I was not well enough to come in today. But fortunately, we've got Wes here and we'll be able to keep rolling through this and get these skills in so we can get to more exciting things. Uh, last week, we started with images. Um, hopefully you've got a good understanding of that, how to find good images, find the big images, not the thumbnails, put them into documents and, and manipulate them there. If you didn't get a chance to do your practice slide, please go back and do that green practice slide. Make sure you have those skills because we will need them going forward. Uh, today we're going to start with our drawings. And these are drawing skills are going to be applicable in all kinds of different applications and things that you'll do. They will be so useful to you. And we're going to use a lot of these even when we do 3D down the road, certainly when you're doing presentations and such. Let's start with making some shapes. So we're in Google Slides, and we have a Shapes button right there in the top. And look at all the options for shapes. Lots of fun shapes here. And I'm going to grab the rectangle, and I can click and drag a rectangle to whatever shape I want. I can make it really tall and skinny, or I can make it really wide and I have a rectangle. Let's make another one, but this time, when I drag it out, I'm gonna hold the shift key down. Watch what happens. No matter how I drag the mouse, it's going to make a square of a bigger or smaller shape. And we're gonna see the same thing, for example, in the circle. Without the shift key, I can make all kinds of ovals, but if I hold the shift key, I'm only going to get circles. Trying to make a circle by hand without that shift key is really difficult. Once I have a shape, oh, let's pick another one here. Do -do, how about a parallelogram? There we go. Once I've got a shape, I can change it. I can make it bigger or smaller by picking one of these corner handles, these blue squares here. I can do all kinds of things with it. If I want it to stay the same proportions, I can hold down shift just like with the circle and square. And now it's just a bigger or smaller version of the same thing. One final trick. Let's say I have a left arrow, but I wanted a right angle arrow. I can rotate as well. This handle right on the top of the box is how I rotate. It can be really hard and a little bit frustrating to grab these, by the way. But once I grab, I click and drag, and look, I can rotate all around. Also, you'll see when you're rotating a number there, that is the angle. You're probably not really comfortable with angles yet, with their uh, numerical values, but you will be. And this is a really good way to practice. So for example, here's a 90 degree angle, or we can do a 45 degree angle, which is halfway to a 90. Okay, practice time. What I want you to do is make a rectangle, rotate that rectangle 45 degrees, make a circle, and turn the circle into an oval. And you can do them all right on this slide where you've got the directions. Let's take, uh, oh, a good maybe seven and a half minutes. Let's see if we can get it done in that time. See you in a few. And we're back. All right, when we make shapes, it's almost like we've cut them out of paper or something. They can be on different layers. So in this case, for example, we have a white circle that is on top of a blue rectangle. Well, what happens when we want to change those layers? We can do that either through the Arrange menu with the order. And for example, we can bring the blue rectangle to the front, or we can two-finger click and get that same order menu and send something forward or backward. We can also group shapes together so that they act like one shape. So in this case, I have a white circle and a gray rectangle. Let me hold down shift and select them both. So now they're both selected. Now I can go to the arrange menu and hit group or the two finger click menu and hit group. There's also a, a keyboard shortcut for that. 
Now when I click, they both select. And if I make them bigger or smaller, they act together. This can be really handy. For example, let's change the color of these. Now they look like one shape. They're all grouped together, they act together. They look like they're just one really cool shape. We have two more tricks we can do. Let's say that I want to make a Valentine's card. Let me grab a heart. I'm doing Valentine's. I've got to change the color there. Now I want this heart to be right in the center of the card. So I could try to align it by hand. And it does give me these red guide tools, which are handy. But it can be really difficult. It can be pretty frustrating to get it to the center. But we can have the computer do that for us. If I go up to the Arrange menu up here, I can look for Center on Page, and I can center it horizontally or left and right, and I can also do it with a two-finger click. And in this case, in this uh, example, let's center it vertically as well. And now I've got the heart perfectly centered on the page. Very handy. And finally, if I have two shapes, I can align them together. So I have a rectangle and a circle here that I would like to be really well aligned here. I can select the both of these, either do my two finger click or go up to the arrange menu on the top, and now I'm looking for align, and I'm going to align these up and down or vertically. I can align to the top of each shape, or the bottom, or in this case the middle, and look at that, perfectly aligned. All right, it's practice time. Here's what I want you to do. First, move the circle behind the rectangle. I want you to group the rectangle and the circle together, then center this grouped rectangle and circle vertically on the page. Finally, middle align the triangle and the heart. And that's it for today. Thanks a lot.